Welcome to part two of how to read a crochet pattern. This tutorial is written for the crocheter who knows how to crochet basic stitches and would like to explore patterns designed by Mary Maxim. This tutorial does not show how to crochet each stitch from the beginning to the end, but rather shows you one repeat of the stitches written in the pattern and relies on you, the crocheter, to continue following the instructions written. To follow along on this tutorial, you may find it helpful to have a couple of balls of dishcloth cotton with you and to download the striped dishcloth pattern. Those links are available in the description of this video. The pattern we selected for this tutorial, the crochet dishcloth striped dishcloth pattern, was selected because it has a few elements that are typical in Mary Maxim patterns. This pattern shows how repeats are written in different ways, both in a row and as a repeated row. It also uses mostly basic stitches and can be completed in one sitting. Know that in each pattern designed by Mary Maxim, some basic information is assumed, and the purpose of this tutorial is to inform on pattern reading and not crochet techniques. We recommend if you have any questions or need assistance with a pattern technique, please contact our project assistance team. They are available Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Again, look in the description of this video to find their contacts. To crochet this pattern, you will need two skeins of dishcloth cotton and a size H8 5 millimeter hook. As we begin this tutorial, notice the white box on the lower left hand side with the pattern instructions enclosed. To begin your pattern using blue, chain 31 for a beginning chain. Row 1. Single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain. When finished, turn. You should have 30 single crochets. The reason why you should have 30 stitches instead of 31 is because you skipped the first chain. The skipped chain helps keep your edges even. This functions similar to the chain 3 at the beginning of the next row, but on a single crochet row it rarely, if ever, counts as a stitch. Make sure to count your stitches at the end of each row. This is the only row that indicates a stitch count because it's the only row where there is an increase, or in our case, a decrease of the total amount of stitches or chains. Subsequent rows will all have a count of 30 stitches. Counting your stitches at the end of each row is the easiest way to check that all of your stitches are placed in the correct spot. Notice that each row ends with a period, then the number of stitches in the row are indicated with parentheses. We begin row two with the right side indicated in parentheses. We indicate right and wrong side for joining other elements, such as borders. Now chain three. Notice this counts as the first double crochet now and throughout the pattern. From here on out, any time you see a chain three at the beginning of a row, know that it is the same as a double crochet. This is important because when you get to row three, you're instructed to single crochet in each double crochet across. This chain three is included. Then double crochet in the next single crochet, sometimes written as next stitch. Next, we see some brackets. Those indicate the start of a repeat. Now we're going to skip the next single crochet and double crochet in each of the next 
two single crochets. Now working in front of the last two stitches, double crochet in the skipped single crochet. Now skip the next two stitches and double crochet in the next stitch. This would be the third stitch from the last single crochet of row one that has a stitch worked in it. Now working behind the last stitch, double crochet in the first, then the second skipped single crochet. Notice the double asterisk. The double asterisk is going to be important later as we finish our final repeat of the row. To finish your first repeat, double crochet in each of the next four single crochets. Your first repeat is complete. Repeat the stitches in the brackets three times total, ending the last repeat at the double asterisks. We've already finished one repeat. So the next repeat we finish from bracket to bracket, and the third one we finish from bracket to asterisk. Second repeat complete. The third repeat is complete, ending at the double asterisk. Finish your row by double crocheting in each of the last two single crochets, then turn. Now count your stitches. You should have 30. Row two is complete. Begin row three with a chain one. Now single crochet in each double crochet across the row, changing to white in the last single crochet, then turn. To change color, continue your stitches as normal, except pull through using the new color at the very end of the stitch. In this part of our pattern, we are completing a single crochet. To change color in the last single crochet, you will insert your hook and draw through a loop, then draw the new color through both loops. To finish your row, turn. For rows 4 and 5, repeat rows 2 and 3. 
Sometimes this is also written as rows four and five are worked the same as row and two and three. Change to blue in the last single crochet of row five. For row four, we repeated row two and worked all the instructions just the same. Row five is a repeat of row three, except we're gonna change to blue in the last single crochet of row five. Row five is complete and it's worked just the same as row three, except for we changed to blue in the last stitch. Now repeat rows two through five three times, then rows two and three once. This center is now complete. Begin round one. We've already changed our color to white and turned our work in the last stitch of, row, of the row three repeat. When crocheting the rounds, we will continue using the white cotton. Start with a single crochet in each of the single crochet stitches of the previous row, except working three single crochets in the corner, or the last stitch of the row. We work three single crochets in each corner so your washcloth will lay flat and not pucker. See here as we work three single crochets in the corner. Now turn your work so you're working in the ends of the rows. We want to single crochet evenly to the next corner. On the model shown, we did one single crochet worked on the ends of single crochet rows, and two single crochets are worked in the ends of double crochet rows. Notice the double asterisk. We will be repeating this part of the pattern later in the round. Again, work three single crochets in the corner. Now turn your work so you're working along the bottom of the project. Now you'll be working in the unused loops of the beginning chain. Single crochet in each chain to the corner. Again, remember to do three single crochet in the last stitch. Now repeat from double asterisk to double asterisk once. These are the ends of the rows. When finished, do a slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. Now that you're getting really good at reading patterns, we left round two to do on your own. Chain one. Single crochet in the same stitch and single crochet in each single crochet around, 
working three single crochets in each corner single crochet, slip stitch in the first single crochet to join, then fasten off and weave in all ends. Remember to weave in your ends on the wrong side of the pattern. Thank you for joining us for part two of this series. Stay tuned for part three of how to read a crochet pattern. In part three, we'll be doing some troubleshooting, we'll talk about gauge, and then we'll also talk about what to do if you think you found a mistake in the pattern. Make sure to subscribe to all of our social media profiles, and happy crafting.